So I'm going to run through P6 calculator today. Um, it, I am gonna run through newer features to the tool. This is a tool that um, I think brings so much flexibility to P6 and then the reporting that you're doing out of P6. So, so it's certainly my favorite tool of all the Emerald tools because I've used it with so many clients to give them all sorts of great functionality, save them a huge amount of time. So today I am joining you, I'm Nicole Jarden. I'm joining you from Calgary. Uh, snow on the ground, but sunny, beautiful, and uh, hopefully we'll get a bit more fall weather coming our way. So let's talk about why we made P6 Calculator. So um, we've, we've had programmers on our team from the beginning, um, so 28 years of Emerald being a uh, Primavera partner. And the main reason we make any of our tools is because the clients we're working with need solutions. So we build those and then they morph into tools when more and more of our clients want the same thing. So we've seen some common struggles. Okay. So we put all sorts of fantastic data inside of P6. And then sometimes it's hard to get it where you want it to make your life easy. So for example, things can be sitting down at the activity level or resource level, but you can't get at them easily at the project level. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the sort of part bits and pieces of functionality that we've put into our calculator. And what I'm gonna show you needs to be taken as food for thought, okay? Because I show you one idea doesn't mean it's the only thing the tool can do because it's very flexible. It's easy for our group to add func similar functionality and build on it, okay? So that's something to keep in mind as we run through some examples. So it's, that's generally one of the struggles that we have is developing the data at the right levels to make it super easy to see things, to filter on them, to report them out um, into Power BI or Tableau for others to see. That's really a big challenge. Um, and if you want to have data from other systems, like um, an asset management system or an ERP like JD Edwards or SAP, or Fusion, et cetera, there's so many, and we've integrated to all of them, so many of them. Uh, we use Zoho here, so we've integrated even to Zoho projects. So the idea is when you get that data, you wanna be able to use it well. So that's another challenge that we face for sure. So the that's why we built Calculator. And some of the features I'm gonna show you today go even beyond that. So I'm gonna show you um, reading resources to make an activity code, to make a project tag, okay? Now you might say, well, why does someone need that? Well, I'm gonna show you why something like that is uh, super fantastic. And um, auto logic development. So we have clients who, integrate to other systems. So some of the main data sources are other systems and they don't wanna to have to keep changing the logic when order the order of operations change, okay? Or if you wanna just put a priority and you want P6 to build the logic, we've got that now, okay? So I'm gonna show you a lot of utilities that will save you a heck of a lot of time. And they can save you updating time or project development time. And then the key, of course, is always to get what we're putting together in P6 out to the team. And more and more, we're just finding a huge explosion in um, taking the data out to other reporting systems, okay? So that's where we've built our P6 reporter tool. It streamlines that, it makes it so easy. And you should explore that if that's something you're being asked to do. Um, so let me ask a quick question here. Um, what parts of P6 are you using? Do you use the schedule only? Do you schedule and resources? Do you schedule resources and costs? Okay, so that's a quick question. If you wanna answer it, we do share all the statistics on our website. And I think we send a mailer out once a year with all the statistics that we've gathered from these webinars. So um, 
it's interesting to see. So usually, usually um, we see an interesting um, percentage. Now, the people who voted so far, the percentage is quite, quite cool because often people don't explore resources and costs as much as they can because they feel like it's hard to deal and manage with manage that data. So we got an interesting uh, subset of answers, but go ahead, keep answering and we can share the statistics at the end. So the key here is to make it easier to deal with the data and get that data to the extended team, as I mentioned, out reporting through P6 if you do it, fine, but we're finding more and more the reporting capabilities of these off the shelf tools can be more, more uh, easy, user friendly, and we're doing a lot of work on that front um, so that the data gets into their hands easier. Now, if you're trying to report a portfolio level or project level, um, of course, some of the data at the activities and resources, getting it up to the project level automatically is going to be so much easier for reporting. So that's an interesting piece that I'm going to show you on calculator. So essentially, how does it work? Well, you just you you we always sell this tool with some consulting. So you say, okay, I want uh, an activity to be able to see the resource, make an activity code out of it, and have that be a project code. Okay. So then we use our core functionality, we build out what we want and we deploy it. Okay, so it's a, that's what we would call an automation. And in this case, it's a roll up from a lower level up. Now we also have roll down automation. So I'll show you a little bit of that here as well. And that can be in codes. It can be in user defined fields, okay? So if you want dates or flagging, um, and I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you flags going from the lower level up and uh, show you some dates going down. Okay, so gonna do a lot of different things. So this is gonna be definitely a food for thought webinar. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss any questions. So far, so good. Okay, awesome. No questions yet. So go ahead. If you do have questions, feel free to put them in. And um, Dan is in the in the webinar and some other Emerald folks. So we should be able to answer them as we go. OK, so let me explain to you what you're seeing on the screen. So I am taking advantage of this split screen thing that we have inside P6 client. Now, the things I'm showing you in client are not client only. So if you if your group uses the web, the same features and functions exist in there. OK, um, so it's all a matter of using different layouts, et cetera, to put that together. So I'm showing you two things. I'm showing you the project window and I'm showing you the activity window. Now. Um, Maybe some of you don't know that, that you can do that. You can do this split screen thing in P6. Now, the reason I'm going to show you that is because I'm going to do things at the activity and I want you to see that it's changing the project window, uh, not instantaneously, but pretty darn quick. OK, so let me explain what we're looking at and then I'll get into doing some scenarios with you. OK, so the first thing is we have a list of projects. Now these projects are, uh, they can be construction, uh, they could be drilling, they could be anything really. But the key thing with this project portfolio that I've got here is that I have what I'm gonna call an automatic code being built. And that code is doing all sorts of things for me. So I'm gonna explain that. So this code is grouping the projects by a portfolio. In this case, it's my 2023 project plan. It's grouping by equipment. So in this case, it's a drill rig, but it could be a crane, it could be a variety of things. Then it's going by geography. So in this case, I've got some projects in British Columbia, some in Edmonton, Alberta, some in Calgary, Alberta, okay? 
Then I have a third layer or fourth layer, I guess. It's an iteration. So the, the time that we're going into the, uh, the, the number of times we're going to work on that project, okay? So you might have the crane going in and out. You might have the rig going in and out, okay? So that's what that is about. And then we have the actual project. So the project here, we have a handful of them um, and they're in some sort of order. Now, if you've ever worked on a project where you have huge long lists of equipment and you need to be scrolling up and down and trying to find the equipment that you're looking for, you know how frustrating the ordering can be when you've got something like that. So this utility that I'm gonna show you as part of P6 Calculator is actually going to rearrange the order of the code automatically, which again, if you've used P6 with big lists, you know that can be frustrating because you want the order to be chronological perhaps. You don't just want it to be alphabetical. Um, and chronologically, equipment that you're about to approach on a turnaround can change quite drastically. So this thing is awesome because it's gonna change it for me automatically. Okay, so I'm gonna show that to you. I just wanted you to first get the idea of what we're dealing with here. Okay, now, a big factor in this particular way I want to see the data is my major equipment. In this example, it's a drill rig. So you can see here, I'm showing you rig one, and then the projects rig one is working on. So here I've got um, my rig one is actually my resource. Okay, so let me go ahead and open up the um, bottom here. So just so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to show you the resources. So you can see right here that I've got uh, the rig is mobilizing equipment and it's doing the construction. Okay, this rig. So it could be a crane, it could be a major bulldozer, whatever major equipment you're interested in monitoring and managing. Okay, so in this case, that's what I've got here. I've got the rig. Now, these are the two basic P6 fields that you're used to working with. Now, the field that we've added with P6 calculator is two. We've got two fields just to show you how this works. So I've got a field that can be a code. Okay, so here's an example of the code. And the code is going to be built dynamically. I don't have to pre-build it. So P6 calculator is going to add a new one if it needs to. Okay, so that's another thing. It takes away that management and maintenance. So that's awesome. So I'm just showing you that we can uh, use codes and we can also have the code make a user defined field. So whatever makes sense in your business would be the way we do it. Okay, now what I thought I would do as an example is I'm gonna sh just open a few projects Okay, so I've got them all open, but I'm gonna just open a few projects. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reassign the um, rig one to rig two, okay? Now, in doing that, the calculator is gonna rearrange everything that I'm seeing on the um, project window, okay? So one of the things it's doing is it's going to actually rearrange this field at the project level automatically, okay? So let me go ahead and get that started. And then uh, I'll show you, whoops, wrong place. That's the one thing with split screen. Let me just get that off of there so we can see all of them. Let me go over here. That's what I want it to do. And let me turn that one off. And then I'm gonna assign, reassign, all of the rigs from rig one to rig two. Now this is a feature that you may know about, you may use it. Uh, if not, maybe I'm gonna show you a new trick. So there's this little swap utility. So 
So I'm going to swap from rig one. And I'm going to swap it for rig two. OK, so what this is going to do is it's going to switch. Uh, all of them. OK, it's going to take a second. It, so it's switch. It goes through every single activity that has rig one and it switches it from rig one to rig two. OK, so then I just save that to the database and I can close this window. And then uh, it's going to start doing its magic. OK. And what it's going to take a minute or two that depends on a variety of things on how fast this is going to be. OK, and I'm going to move this over here because we'll start to see that uh, it's going to have to say, hey, we're not sure of the order here in a minute as it starts to switch, switch these over. OK, um, now we have a lot of calculator utilities running on this database, so it might take a second. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through and say, hey, you switched the key resource and we have a tag here. It's the resource that's a, uh, in this case, equipment. That's the one we're interested in. And it's going to go and put it uh, here as the tag. You can essentially tell it whatever you want to monitor it. OK, so we could monitor the primary resource if that's the one that's important to you. We could monitor the, the role instead of the resource. So there's a bunch of different ways we could deploy this. OK, so just got to be patient here when you're demoing live. And it should do this in a sec. So it's going to take this and it's going to put them in these two fields and it's going to roll it up to this field automatically. Now, let me while we're waiting, I'll just try and get that on the screen. I'll just uh, squeeze this up a little bit so we can see it on the screen. Oops, maybe what I'll go ahead and do while we're waiting here is just to rearrange it. That'll be a bit easier to see it. Uh, drilling rigs, here we go. Let me get that one over here so we can see it better. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we'll see a clue in a minute here. Here it goes. Okay, here we go. So now it's switched them. It's switched them here and you need, notice here it says, okay, wait a second. These are no longer being done by rig one. So let me go ahead and rerun the program to figure out where these belong in my uh, layout and of course in my equipment sequence. Okay, so it's just redoing the information here. Okay, so uh, normally when you're using it, you're not necessarily staring at it working, but in a demo situation, we got to be patient and let it do, it do its thing. So it's rearranging this code. So it's figuring out, okay, what is the um, scenario, the iteration, sorry, I have these in the wrong order. So the scenario, the rig, the location, the iteration, it's doing all that legwork for me and it's looking at this date, okay? So it's doing all that legwork for me. Okay, so you can see here that it switched these to rig two. So it's grabbing that and auto-populating it here. So we have reporting that goes on this. So right away that reporting would be refreshed if, if we want it to auto-refresh. If we prefer to snapshot it into reporter and push it out, it will do it when we're ready, okay? Because you might be doing many, many different iterations here. Okay, there, it's done, okay, awesome. So it did all that for me. So it looked at the coding and it reevaluated the work being done by this particular rig. Now, not only is it doing the coding, but it's also changing the logic for me. So I'm going to show that in a minute. OK, now let me explain what it just did. So it auto reevaluated my main coding the way that I want to see this data. It did all of that for me automatically. I did not have to go in and reassign these codes or anything. OK, so it's not only 
coding it for me. It's also building the code automatically. Okay, so if I added a new project, okay, so if I added a new project and I'm just gonna copy and paste this project, this code is gonna be rebuilding itself automatically, okay? Um, so let me go ahead and do that. That might take a second. And I'll just rename the project. And I'll just make it C05. Project C05. Okay. So it's going to um, see that, hey, I've got a new project. And it's going to start rejigging this code again. Okay. So this thing is super because it's automating tons of features or tons of things that I'd have to do manually and the thing with manual is it's easy to make a mistake okay so if you, again if you've worked on large large portfolios with hundreds and thousands of wells and you do many many scenarios this stuff can just take your take so much of your time and uh it's, can be pretty demoralizing if you've done turnarounds with huge numbers of equipments and things like that, this would apply there too, okay? So I'm just showing you with a project level reordering, but the same sort of thing could be done inside the activities. Okay, so it's working a way and it's going to add this project five to the list, okay? So it's not quite done yet. Um, we can just let it do its thing while I show you some more features. Okay, now, um, okay, it looks like it's probably done. Usually when you see that refresh, it's a good clue that it's rejigging the windows and uh, I'll get that back here. So here, you see, it's put project five in the list. Now, let's talk about how it's ordering this list. Now, the reason we made this list order is because we also wanted it to do auto logicking, auto sequencing. So what that means is the project uh, in this example, C02, is going to go to five, then three, then four, then one. Okay. Okay. In this case, this is a linear type of work. We, uh, a crane can only be in one project at a time. A rig can only be on one project at a time. So it's sort of linear, okay? So the same could apply for real work, et cetera. So in this example, that's gonna also be our auto logicking, okay? So let me explain that and you'll see some of it take place over in this window. Now to see the auto logicking, I'm gonna switch to a different layout because it'll just look a bit easier for you to uh, follow. Um, so let me switch that layout, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of show you what's going on. Okay, so in this case, I've opened the rigs, uh, so it's, it's pretty much the same order as what I've got here in the project window. So it's showing it chronologically. Now let me just give you a bit more room here on the Gantt chart to, to sort of see what I'm talking about there. Okay, so project two is then going to five, and then it's going to three um, and four. So that's the, uh, and then one. So that's the chronological order. And the key thing here is the work at the job site. So the equipment, the construction, it could be drilling, could be roadworks. Okay, so that's the key part that is logicking itself up automatically this upfront work with afes etc they may or may not need to butt up against the construction so they could be done pre okay so again depending on your project uh, the auto logicking would be a little different now let me show you how we can use this now in this example we're using a date tag so this is our wish list 
for the order of the work. It could be a priority code, okay? It could be an ordering code. It could be whatever makes sense in your case. Now, in our case, the way we built this, we're using a date, okay? So um, let me sort that so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is why this is ordered the way it is. It's this date that it's using. Now, I might be in a team meeting and we say, okay, well, we don't actually want to do number two, project two first. We actually want to rearrange that and we want to put that one last. Okay. So in this case, now it's going to go last. And we may want to say we're actually going to do three before uh, five. So we're going to pull that one earlier. That's going to be our first project. Okay. So this field being a date is our key. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to let it go do its magic again. Okay. Now, as a scheduler, what would I have to do to rearrange that? Well, gosh, that would be a pain in the neck. Okay. I'd have to start breaking the logic and redoing the logic. Okay. Which I can do. Of course I can do. But if you're doing that lots of times a day, it's easy to make a mistake. And my gosh, it's like numbing, brain numbing work. And you start to get uh, what I would call bug eyed and you could make mistakes. Okay. So this is why we have this utility that we've built. So now it's already done it. It's rearranged some of the, uh, it's rearranged the order. You can see that right away. And it's starting to rearrange the logic. Okay, so let me just make sure it's finished. Might take a minute here. There we go, We're starting to see the logic. So it basically breaks the logic and starts rebuilding it. And likely it might be a good idea for me to, um, to reschedule it, but you can see it's starting to redo the logic for me, okay? Now, another thing that we've got happening inside of this is we have certain activities that need to be on the first project in the sequence and some that might need to be on the last project in the sequence, okay? So the utility that we have here is smart enough to rearrange where they go, okay? So I didn't point that out. I should have pointed that out better, but it switched this from whatever the project was that was first, which was number two, I believe, and it switched it to number three, okay? Automatically, okay? So this thing can save hundreds, and hundreds of hours for your team, depending on the kind of work you do uh, with ease, okay? So if you can explain how the logic needs to work, our team can get it in calculator and it does it automatically, okay? Now, why don't I do one more and then we can move on to some other subjects. Let me just do one more rearranging, okay? So I might say, oh, actually we are gonna do Project two first, so let me bring that back into the mix. And then we're gonna do project three. Um, so that's okay, I can leave that. And uh, let me just make a difference in dates. And then we're gonna do project one. And uh, Project five, we're gonna put it after project one. Okay, so I'm just using these dates. Whoops, let's get that one last. It doesn't really matter. I'm just rearranging them just so you get, get a feel for how you can use this. And I'll save it. And that kicks off the rearranging. Okay, so this is the project, act sorry, this is the activity that needs to go first. So you should see that switch to the first project being project two. Okay, so I'm gonna save it and I'll start refreshing. And we, oh, looks like it's working. Okay, not quite there yet, no problem. We'll just wait a second. So it's, see it removed all the logic and it's gonna redo it. Yeah. And uh, the clue is when it starts to rearrange the order. 
So this is, this is wonderful. Again, if you've been in big turnarounds or major commissioning and startup projects where you have so much equipment and the order is changing and you want to give the team a nice scant, it's not easy without doing it very manually. Okay, so here we go. So now you see it switched project two to be first. It moved that key lead in activity and it's going to start rebuilding the logic. Okay. So just give it a minute and it'll do its thing. And let me just see where it's at. Yeah, so it's got this one going first. This one, that's one hasn't moved yet. So let's just give it a minute. And uh, what I'll do also is, okay, I've got it sorted by this. So that helps us kind of get the lay of the land. So two to three to one to five to four. Okay. Okay, so it looks like it's still working away. And let me just see if I, come on relationship lines. Let's just see how it's doing. There it goes, okay. Okay, so you see it's rebuilding the logic, which is what we want. It looks like it's pretty much done. Uh, only thing I didn't do is let me go ahead and reschedule this. And we should see some influences here. There we go, that looks better, okay. So this thing is fantastic. If I was doing a lot of logic building and uh, this thing, if you can automate it, we, we've done it. So this, this can be really huge time saver and frustration saver and the rest of it. If you've been in uh, big capital projects with reporting and lots of scenario building, or in large turnarounds, uh, especially if you're, low, you're afraid to use resource leveling and you're building the logic, this thing could really save a lot of time and frustration. Okay, so those are the first ones I wanted to show you. Um, are there any immediate questions on that? Okay, no, nothing immediate, okay. If there is, just chat it through and uh, Dan and uh, we can try and tackle the questions. Okay, good. So let's look at a few other features. So I already showed you the auto resourcing. Okay, so when we change the resource, it automatically uh, rolled that up from the bottom to the top. Okay, so this gives us a super great reporting capability to group by rig just at the project level. Okay, so that's a huge benefit there. Makes reporting out into another system very easy. Now, let me touch on some of the dates that we have rolling up and rolling down as well. Okay, so let me look at some dates. So we have dates and dates, are generally down, of course, on the uh, activities and then getting them easily usable at the project is not always so easy, okay? So let me just squeeze this up a little bit and uh, get some of these dates on the screen. So we have the ability to do what we call a roll down and also a roll up, okay? So we have both. Now let me explain what that means. So roll down. So rolling down is taking something from the upper level and putting it to a lower level. So in this case, I'm taking something at the project level and I'm showing it as a field on the lower level. Now you can do that already with codes. You can't necessarily do that with user defined fields. And you can't necessarily do that to all the layers that you want. Okay, now in the later versions of P6, 
Oracle has made some improvements on getting the data to display at different levels. So that's good, but it's not necessarily in the exact same manner as what we've got here. So in this case, we're showing those values, not only showing them, but they're actually going down onto the activity. Okay, it's not just a visual, it's actually putting it on the activity. So you can see they're marrying up to what we've got there. Now, again, that can be super handy if we want to do a comparison, okay, between uh, different dates here. Now, the other thing that we're doing is there's a date that we want, and it's this date here, a drilling date. So we're actually filtering on the a drilling date, on the drilling code, I should say. And we're actually trying to see the earliest date that uh, is available. And it's creating that date. It's reading the data and creating the date. And after it reads the data, uh, filtered data creates the date, it then puts it up here on the uh, project level. Again, if I want to do a comparison or if I want to filter on a midpoint of the project, this is fantastic, okay? So you might have an in-service date if you're in electrical work. You might have an in-service date. We might have an in-production date. We might have commissioning complete. There's a bunch of different key dates that you might want to monitor in your project activities and get it up on the project level so you can filter on it, okay? So we do this, we use this one a lot with different clients, okay? Now in this case, we're running a filter on particular code, okay? So it could be the earliest date on a particular code. It could be the last date on a particular code. It could be a particular activity that we're interested in, okay? Um, now that could be by the activity ID, it could be by a code. There's a variety of ways we can do this. Okay, so we've done these many, many times for clients and they work super fantastic. Now, the next thing that we usually add on to filtering uh, with dates, roll ups, roll downs, is we usually add flagging. Okay, so let me go to the next layout and talk about flagging. Okay, so I've got a bunch of great things that we can do with flagging. And if any of you have our P6QA tool, you know that we use flagging in that, in that tool a lot. Okay, so let me just fix this layout um, and get a little bit of the extra stuff off the screen that we don't need to look at for this particular example. And just make it a little easier to see. We can get rid of that. Okay, awesome. Okay, good. So this is a little bit easier to see what I want to explain. Okay, so in this example, let me just show you the Gantt. So we have our current in-service date or the date we're going to deliver on what we committed to. But the team also wants to track um, two other key dates. So our scenario, our last scenario that we agreed as a team that we were going to deliver, okay, and the budgeted date. So the date when we snapshotted our budget, what was the date? Okay, now there's a few different ways you might want to do this. You might want to do this just as a baseline, which is fine, but we have lots of clients who actually want to see those dates right on the screen, as in this example, uh, a milestone, okay, so that they can see it, they can report on it. So it's a bit more tangible for them, okay? So there's lots of different ways to do this. So in this example, we're, we've got them on the screen, okay? Now, we can see visually that we've got a mismatch, okay? So in this case, we're delivering early, which is fantastic, maybe. In this case, we're delivering late, okay, which is a problem. So you want to be able to see those much more readily, okay? Now, not only do I want to see them, 
because I can see them here in this uh, visual. But I also want to know, okay, well, how bad is it, right? Because I don't want to have to try and count how many months, et cetera, okay? Now, if, um, if you have a cash flow on these, okay, so the, think of this this way. If you have a cash or a dollar amount, it could be a revenue amount, it could be a cost amount, you can start graphing off of these, okay? So you can do histograms and things like that. So these can be super, super helpful, especially if you're pushing it out into other systems where you can do different graphing, okay? So keep those ideas in mind. Now, what I wanna show you here, and I'll just, uh, I'll just give a bit more room here to the table, just so you can see it, is we've calculated what we call the variance between these dates. So I have that in-service date and I have my scenario one. I have that in-service date and I have my budget uh, milestone. So not only am I flagging these, but I'm also giving you the variance. Okay, so this is something we've got in, not only in our calculator tool, we take advantage of that function in our CAPS tool, we take advantage of that function in our P6QA tool, okay? So that way we're using a consistent approach across all the tools, plus these things can be reported on out into P6 Reporter, okay? So look, if you haven't explored some of those ideas, definitely join us for those other webinars. So I do have a QA one this evening um, and we've got P6 Reporter probably coming up in November as well. Okay, so what do we do with that data? Well, we bring those data points out to the project level, okay? That way it's very, very easy to see them. You don't have to open all the projects and dig deep into the de details. We are bringing them with the roll-up capability of calculator up to the project level, okay? So now I can see very quickly and I can create a dashboard up out in Power BI or Tableau or business objects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many reporting tools we've worked with. Via the P6 reporter tool, we can get those out to, um, uh, to the other systems, okay? Now in this example, I can see that I'm also missing a few flags. So this is letting me know I'm missing an activity here. And uh, so it can't monitor it, okay? So that might just be that I made a mistake in building this out. It could also be that this project was not included in the budget, okay? So there could be a few re reasons why that's missing, okay? Now, just to give you the idea of how this can work is I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna copy and paste this activity into this project, okay? Um, and I'm going to give it a date, okay? I'm just gonna give it a date in this example. And uh, in this case, they have to be uh, constraints because they are just commitment dates. We don't want them floating all around with the schedule. That's what this one is. This, this activity is the live activity. These are uh, commitment dates, if you will. So I'm just gonna use a constraint in this example and I'll just change that just just so you can get the idea of how this thing works, okay? And I'll save that. And it should populate that with it, the new metric once it runs through and does the calculation, okay? Okay, so that could take a minute and it'll run through and do its thing, okay? so. Let me just recap on that because this, uh, whoops, let me do that over here. This feature is one we've deployed for many clients, not necessarily exactly this, but many clients have this kind of need. Um, and uh, I guess I may actually wanna reschedule this. I should have done that first, sorry, I didn't think of it. And it might help if I say yes, multiple screens. And uh, that will probably help get it to do its thing. Yeah, so not only are we 
taking advantage of um, the visual here, but also we're getting a calculation, a variance calculation, and we're getting some flagging. So we've got all the different facets here. And then now we should see the effect. Here we go, right there, okay? So this, these sort of features, um, as I mentioned, we've deployed for many clients in many different industries, electrical, uh, mining. Um, this is a rig example, but certainly for turnarounds, con large construction projects, this sort of stuff can be super handy. And automating it is not that difficult. Yes, there's a bit of a price tag, but it could, it's probably one or two hours in many cases, and maybe up to eight hours for something much more complicated. But eight hours of consulting that could save you hundreds of hours in a year. I think these sort of things are super fantastic, well worth it. it takes a lot of stress, frustration away when you're on a project and when you're trying to manage a portfolio, especially a portfolio with a lot of different scenarios, okay? Where things are highly dynamic, automating these things can make a lot of sense. Okay, one last one, a very quick little one that can be super handy too. And then we'll wrap up. So we also have the ability to do a lot of things with calendars. Now, in this example, I'm going to do um, something with calendars, and I think I'm going to open these projects up, and I'm going to uh, switch the layout for my calendar layout. So we have clients with lots of uh, calendar requirements. Um, now, the two I'm going to touch on are uh, weather, so road bans, weather timeframes that you're, you're not allowed to work, where you have special non-work times, and wildlife. Okay, so we have wildlife restrictions. Many, many different kinds of uh, clients have those sorts of things. So you need special calendars in those cases built to help you address non-work times usually. Okay, so let me just give you the lay of the land of some ideas here. So if there's a point in time where we have wildlife restriction, okay, so we might not be allowed to work at certain periods in, uh, so in this example, I've turned off the work from October, November, December, so I have three month non-work window, okay? So we can use, automations to say that this project actually does have a wildlife restriction, okay? Now, it may not be all the activities, okay? So some of the activities might have a wildlife restriction. Might, some might have a weather restriction. So like moving equipment in and out during road bends, you don't want to have your schedule showing that, okay? So these are just, again, ideas food for thought. The idea is that I'm going to say, I do actually have a wildlife restriction on this project. Okay. Now what this is going to do, so I'm going to save this. Okay. And I can do as many as I want. Okay. I might have two of them that we have a wildlife restriction just by their geographical location and the others don't, which is fine. So then I save that and I tell it to go in and switch these calendars. Now it's going to switch them based on this, this code that I have here. Okay, so I'll just give it a minute. It's got to do its magic and do that work for me. Okay, so this is a simple example. We have another one that I, I will probably do in our next calendar or sorry, calculator webinar for uh, intersecting calendars. So if any of you use SureTrack years ago, we used to have a meeting type activity, which was a calendar intersection type utility. Okay, so that uh, is essentially what our intersect calendar does. Okay, so this can be fantastic when you've got complex 
job access requirements. Okay, so I'll do more on calendars in our next webinar as well. Uh, this is just taking a minute. Sorry, guys. Just depends on the timing of the utility that's monitoring it. There it goes. Okay, so it switched some of these to wildlife restrictions in there. And then, of course, what I would want to do is uh, reschedule and see the impact. So it looks like this thing's been pushed. This one's been pushed. Okay, so then you can reschedule and see the, I'll have to say yes the impacts of that, okay? So these sorts of automations can be super fantastic. And this is just an example, food for thought. Everything I showed you hopefully is just food for thought. Okay, are there any questions that would be useful for me to stay in the software? I don't see any obvious ones. Okay, so hopefully that means you're thinking hard and you're seeing things that are interesting or hopefully it doesn't mean you don't understand what I was showing. Um, okay, so let's wrap up. And again, of course, if you have any questions, throw them at us and we'll tackle them as we roll uh, wrap up here. So P6 calculator, has a bunch of odds and ends that we've got in it. Okay, so I showed you a few of the automations today with auto coding from the resource. That coding was automatically done. I didn't have to code it, the calculator did it. Not only did it code it, it sequenced it. So that makes my layouts much easier to manage. Uh, it sequenced it. it also allowed me to resync, resequence using just a pick list. Okay, in my date case, it was a date, but it could be a priority, and it would reorder by priority. I showed you that we had dates that were automatically rolling up with flagging and variance calculations. Okay, now all of this, of course, is so that we can make sure we're doing better on our project. We're getting the right people to the right place at the right time. That's the whole objective, okay? So the key thing I think hopefully you saw and our users have given us the feedback, it significantly reduces manual work. So you can do more work or as much work with less people. And even if you're not getting less people, a lot less frustration, okay? Um, and you can see some automatic statusing can take place. Um, which I didn't show you. So we actually do have the ability to status activities and then back status. So I'll take upon myself to do some of that in another webinar. Efficiency. Okay, so you can, I think that's obvious. You can see that you can do things much more quickly. So if you're there with a group on scenario building, this sort of thing can really help. Okay, so you could do that in a test environment. Okay, we have a utility, again, I haven't shown it in uh, any of the webinars yet, but we have a utility that syncs two different P6 databases. Okay, so that's super fantastic if you wanna do scenario building in a test or a dev environment. So visibility. So key thing, of course, is to get that visibility out to management and make the reporting much, much easier. Okay, so that's a huge driver of the types of things that we do with our clients. Having stuff living and breathing only in P6 and not getting out to the wider team is not valuable, okay? So getting that stuff out fast, easy, is hugely beneficial off calculator. And then accuracy, okay? If I had to go and change all that logic that it changed automatically for me, it would have taken me, I would guess at least half an hour and maybe more. Okay, um, even if you have fantastic layouts, I think it would have taken me more time to get rid of the logic and rebuild it. And that's just a little sim simple demo example. Okay, so accuracy, um, very important because it's easy to make mistakes when you're redoing logic, especially if you're in the middle of a turnaround and you got to get it done very quickly, good luck. Um, and then of course, the idea here with understanding the safety, the wildlife criteria, making sure you're adhering to all the criteria 
that you need to run the project on. You can see those sorts of benefits as well. Um, okay, good. So I hope that gave you a good idea of the sorts of things that you can do. If this looked interesting to you, definitely reach out and uh, definitely uh, join some of our other calculator webinars. Go back and look at the recordings because we've got other things that we showed in those. Uh, automatic foreign exchange rates, automatic loop detection. Uh, we've got lots of functionality that we've built over the years. So definitely uh, reach out. Uh, if there's something you're struggling with, we're here to help. We really have been working for close to 30 years now on automations, integrations. That's why we have, a, I think, the most uh, diverse toolkit out there in the market for P6 add-ons to help make your life easier. So throw some questions at me if there's anything coming to mind. I've got my information there if uh, you want to reach out. Shannon, if you could share Donna's email. Uh, so if you're in the in um, Asia Pacific, we also have Donna Ureta with us in the Philippines. You can reach out that way as well. And I'll get it in there. Whoops, if I can do it right. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Shannon. And then you can reach out that way as well. So hopefully the last hour has been beneficial giving you ideas, um, things that maybe you're struggling with that maybe this tool can help with. Now, we sell the tool on a subscription basis and a points basis. So the more things that you want the calculator to do, you buy a little bit bigger package. So it's not by user, it's not by project, it's by the number of things that you want done. Okay, so we tried to make it so that you could definitely get it going on a standard package. And then if you use more and more features, you'd grow into a professional package. And if you just want to be able to use it to your heart's content on lots and lots of things, the corporate package might make the most sense. Okay, so take a look at that, explore that and reach out. And uh, I'll ask one more question, then we'll wrap up. And uh, just let us know if you saw something that's interesting and you want us to follow up in a particular way. Um, you can answer that question. It just helps us know how we can um, help reach out to you, okay? Just to make sure we're reaching out in a, the most appropriate manner for your particular team.